Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the program. This is Thursday, January 21st, coming to you live from our studio in Seoul. I'm Kim mo -kyan. Before we get started, these are the stories we're following at the top of the hour. Joe Biden has officially been sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. Upon his inauguration on Wednesday, Biden vowed to bring America together under his leadership. South Korean President Moon Jae-in sent a congratulatory message touting Biden's leadership in resolving the tasks that lie ahead. Within the first few hours of his term in office, Biden signed executive orders on the issues of immigration, COVID-19 and climate change. Biden said that the U.S. will be rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement. And South Korea confirms 401 new COVID-19 cases on Thursday, staying in the 400s for the second day. President Moon Jae-in assigned the pot signal the possibility of securing more vaccines following the la latest deal between Novavax and SK Bioscience. Our top story today, just hours after being sworn into office, U.S. President Joe Biden got straight to work signing 17 executive orders, memorandums and directives to tackle issues of immigration, COVID-19 and climate change. Press Secretary Jen Psaki in her first press briefing released the details of President Biden's orders as well as the addition of a new task force to tackle the pandemic. Biden and his team also dismantled many of Trump's orders, including the withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord. Joe Biden's first day in office began with his post-inauguration speech. Inheriting a nation faced with the COVID-19 pandemic, a sharp economic downturn and racial divides, Biden used his speech to highlight his plan to bring America together under his leadership. Kim hyo Sun reports. This is a day of democracy. That's what President Joe Biden proclaimed after taking his oath of office during a heavily scaled-back inauguration ceremony as he became the 46th president of the United States. This is America's day. This is democracy's day. A day of history and hope, of renewal and resolve. Through a crucible for the ages, America has been tested anew, and America has risen to the challenge. Today, we celebrate the triumph not of a candidate, but of a cause, the cause of democracy. The people, the will of the people has been heard, and the will of the people has been heeded. We've learned again that democracy is precious, democracy is fragile. And at this hour, my friends, democracy has prevailed. Then he pivoted to the challenges ahead as his inauguration comes at a time of a historic national divide and numerous uncertainties. We'll press forward with speed and urgency, for we have much to do in this winter of peril and significant possibilities. Much to repair, much to restore, much to heal, much to build, and much to gain. He also stressed that his administration will make domestic terrorism a significant focus, especially following the recent riots at Capitol Hill. However, Biden urged Americans to put their differences aside and become united. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. Uniting to fight the foes we face, anger, resentment and hatred, extremism, lawlessness, violence, disease, joblessness and hopelessness. With unity, we can do great things, important things. Kamala Harris was also sworn in as the first female U.S. Vice President. I, Kamala Davy Harris, I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. She's also the first black and South Asian American to ever hold such a senior position in the U.S. Biden and Harris inherit a country facing the worst public health crisis in a century, an unprecedented economic downturn, and rising demands for racial justice. Kim Yo-san, Arirang News. 
South Korean President Moon Jae-in has congratulated U.S. President Joe Biden upon his inauguration, expressing hopes of strengthening this whole Washington alliance. In a letter to Biden on Thursday, Moon said that Biden will be able to achieve unity and prosperity in America. Moon added that South Korea will work together and continue coordination with the Biden administration to boost the bilateral alliance and for regional peace and prosperity. He also expressed hopes of meeting Biden in person in the near future to build trust and discuss matters of mutual interest. As the new president of the United States, a wide range of tasks await President Joe Biden. One of the biggest challenges is tackling the COVID-19 pandemic. Washington's new leader is also expected to try and reinstate America's position as the leading world power with a renewed focus on multilateralism. Kim Dami with more. From attempting to tame the global health crisis to reviving the pandemic hit U.S. economy, it's probably not an understatement to say Joe Biden has his hands full from the get-go. Making matters worse, Biden also needs to try and bridge a divided society that was inflamed or pushed apart by the recent U.S. Capitol riot. He is probably facing the combination of 1861 and 1933, Lincoln facing secession of states from the Union and an impending civil war, and Franklin Roosevelt uh, facing economic collapse of a worldwide depression. Slamming the former Trump administration over its failure to tame the pandemic, President Biden has a promise to administer 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines in his first 100 days in office. He has also promised a $1.9 trillion U.S. dollar rescue package to combat the economic turndown triggered by the health crisis. We will finish the job of getting a total of $2,000 in cash relief to people who need it the most. He also plans to sign a sweeping immigration reform bill and raise the minimum wage as soon as he enters the White House. There's no time to waste. We have to act and we have to act now. Unlike now former President Trump, Biden aims to construct and secure a new order in the international community by re-embracing multilateralism. Biden's focus on alliances may widen the space of navigation in North Korea's denuclearization talks, but it is expected to take some time, especially with Biden's plans for bottom-up diplomacy. But Trump's impeachment trial is forecast to bog down the early days of the Biden presidency as the trial could tie up the Senate and delay the rollout of President Biden's agenda. Kim Dami, Arirang News. Now, leaving the White House and Washington, now the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, on Wednesday gave his last speech to the American people as the 45th president. Despite breaking the long-held tradition of attending his successor's inauguration, he did leave a letter for Biden, despite early reports that he wasn't going to. Choi jung reports. Ahead of Joe Biden swearing in as the 46th president of the United States, Donald Trump departed the White House for the last time on Wednesday, delivering one final speech as president at Joint Base Andrews in front of his family and supporters. The former U.S. president wished the country a good life, thanked the Congress and his VP while promising he would be back in, quote, some form. We've gotten so much done that nobody thought would be possible, but I do want to thank Congress. And I want to thank all of the great people of Washington, D.C., all of the people that we worked with to put this miracle together. So have a good life. We will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He gave his final wave as he boarded Air Force One for Florida, where he and the former First Lady will begin their post-White House life. Trump bade his farewell hours before Biden was to be inaugurated. That made him the first outgoing president since Andrew Johnson in 1869 to skip the inauguration day ceremony that marked a formal transfer of power in a final display of peak at his failure to win re-election in November. However, he did take part in one final presidential tradition on his way out of office, leaving a letter for his successor inside the Oval Office. The White House spokesman did not divulge the contents of what Trump left for Biden to read, but he had placed a letter inside the Oval Office's resolute desk. The letter-writing tradition, giving words of blessings and advice from outgoing to incoming presidents, is a relatively recent one. Having been started lightheartedly by former President Ronald Reagan for his Vice President George H.W. Bush. 
Trump had gotten his letter from former President Barack Obama upon his inauguration back in 2017. Melania Trump and Mike Pence are reported to have done the same for Jill Biden and Kamala Harris, respectively. Choi Jung Yoon, Arirang News. South Korea's health authorities reported 401 new cases of COVID-19 on Thursday. The figure has been lingering around the 400 mark for the fourth day now, and officials remain on high alert over cluster infections and are gearing up to begin vaccinations from next month. Of the new cases Thursday, 380 were locally transmitted, most in the greater Seoul area, and 21 were from overseas. The total number of cases now nears the 74,000 mark. 16 more people have died, raising the death toll to 1,316. South Korean President Moon Jae-in visited a vaccine production plant on Wednesday. There, he highlighted that a deal between Novavax and SK Bioscience raises the possibility of the country securing additional vaccines. Chang tae hyun has this story. South Korea has secured enough vaccines for its entire population, but is working on a deal to acquire more. President Moon Jae-in made this announcement on Wednesday while visiting a COVID-19 vaccine production plant. The president vowed support for the country's bio companies so they can produce vaccines locally and give South Korea vaccine sovereignty. As part of the agreement, SK Bioscience will be able to produce the vaccines. South Korea has secured 56 million COVID-19 vaccines in total from a number of different companies. And with the potential Novavax vaccine, there will be enough for 20 million more people. In the meantime, health authorities say it hasn't been decided when the Novavax vaccines will arrive in the country and that more details will be announced later this month. But this differs from the Prime Minister's remarks on Wednesday that the initial supply from the COVAX facility is likely to arrive in February. The country's daily caseload is showing signs of a slowdown, but health authorities have reiterated why the stronger social distancing measures are still in place. No gatherings of five or more is a measure made for the third wave. This will not depend on the number of daily cases, but on a general judgment of how long the third wave is likely to last and what the risks are. On Wednesday, there were 404 new cases, 373 local and 31 imported. There are currently more than 300 patients who are severely ill, and with 17 additional fatalities, the death toll is at 1,300. Chang Taehyun, Arirang News. British pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca's vaccine may soon receive approval from the World Health Organization as more countries look to add the vaccine to their inoculation plan. According to Reuters, citing internal documents, the approval for the vaccine may come within this month or next. AstraZeneca's vaccine has so far only received approval in individual countries. The report added that UN Health Agency may also approve Moderna's vaccine by the end of next month, though the vaccine is already being in use in the United States. Good morning. Instead of a thick, heavy jacket, we'll need an umbrella today. Rain clouds will develop from the west coast and will start to drop showers from the west starting from mid-afternoon. And 5 to 20 millimeters of rain will fall across much of the country. Meanwhile, mountainous regions in Gangwon-do province will see 1 to 5 centimeters of snowfall. But today's precipitation will not bring colder air to the country. In fact, it will feel more like early spring in most regions, leading to wide gaps in readings of 10 degrees in some parts of the country. Taking a closer look, Gyeongju and Gwangju will make it to 13 degrees Celsius this afternoon, while Jeju Island will have a mid-April-like afternoon with an expected high of 17 degrees Celsius. 
Rain could continue until early dawn tomorrow, while Gangwon-do and southern parts of the country will see wintry mix on this weekend. Meanwhile, readings will remain on the mild side through early next week. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the weather conditions around the world. And that's a wrap for us at the Hour on Arirang News. We'll be back with more of the day's headlines at noon Korea time, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and goodbye.